What is going on? If you came here to learn about Holochain or its token HOT, or maybe even about its new migration onto its new native token Holofuel, then stick around. We're going to bring you a Holochain review. We're going to look at recent announcements, recent price action. We're going to look at Holochain in a nutshell. And then, of course, we're going to look at its soon migration onto its own native token Holofuel. I'm Maximilian. Welcome to my video. If this is your first time here and you're looking for cryptocurrency reviews, cryptocurrency news, then make sure you do subscribe right now. We're going to bring you two videos every single week, every Thursday and every Friday. Well, with that out the way, let's jump straight into Holochain. So holographic storage for distributed applications is exactly what Holochain does. So Holochain applications or otherwise known as apps are held entirely by people. No trusted third parties, uh, no central points of failure. They enable direct architectural consent and cryptographic communication that are low risk and, of course, low cost. Each agent owns an immutable hash chain and stores a public data as public data as monotonic DHT node. Think lightweight, secure, decentralized computing possible on a mobile device. That is the real winner for me when it comes to Holo Chain is that it allows you to run your own chain. Each agent runs its own chain, allowing for you to have your own consensus um, uh, agreements and it allows for you to run a super fast, super lightweight and huge community. Let's think Facebook size community on a mobile. And, um, you know, that's something that's really, really insane. If you think about how blockchains are struggling to scale. So it's very impressive. If we move on to um, you know how the application is run, so it's low cost, lightweight, and secure. Um, every application run runs on its own blockchain, on its own terms, with cheaper hosting overhead. Since users are hosts, as as more agents use an app, the more the hosting power and storage becomes available. The load gets lighter. So with more people that join the network with more agents that use it to run dApps and applications or haps, the cheaper it gets and the faster it gets. Well, not necessarily the faster, but the easier it gets to compute. Much dissimilar to Bitcoin or Ethereum. The more nodes that are on the network, the more load it's got, the more verifications it needs. Therefore, the slower it is to verify the transactions and, and struggles with scalability. So just lastly here, it says each agent source chain holds the app's DNA, the code that runs the app. Its peer validation requirements ensure secure apps. That data cannot be counterfeited, tampered with, or lost. Each app stores its data in a validating DHT, creating redundancy of public data across randomized nodes. That sounds really quite um, uh, confusing, but really what it's trying to say is that each individual agent or otherwise known as nodes in other blockchains um, has its own independent data, its own independent blockchain and its own independent rules uh, or what we would call consensus. When nodes go offline, the DHT is self healing and rebalances the data to different nodes. And if someone alters their own app code that effectively forks themselves out of the shared DHT space into an entirely different application. So yeah, that is Holochain in a nutshell. So WTF is uh, Holochain. Um, existing distributed ledger technologies powered by blockchain such as Bitcoin and Ethereum suffer from scalability issues and also consume massive amounts of energy. We're all well aware of that. Holochain is an energy efficient post blockchain ledger system and decentralized application platform that uses peer to peer networking for processing agent centric agreement and consensus system between users. Now, the key advantage of Holochain is that every device on the network gets its own secure ledger or Holochain and can function independently while also interacting with other devices on the network for a truly decentralized computing solution. So quickly before we progress is that think of a blockchain, you've got multiple nodes. All these nodes will carry the same ledger 
and all of these nodes need to agree for the ledger to find consensus. Polo chain is different, is that each individual agent, is what they call it, has its own blockchain with its own data. Now it's about um, its validation metrics. Each individual agent will have a different validation metric and that's how they find consensus. So let's continue. Um, why is Holochain important for developers to build applications on top of? So Holochain will enable developers to build decentralized applications for governance, collaboration, organizational tools, social networks, social media, um, platform cooperatives, sharing economy, you get where I'm going. So traditional computer systems are designed around a stack-like architecture. So they're layered on top of each other, cumbersome, slow, and of course, very data heavy. Uh, this, uh, this model for data storage and transfer is an old computing, uh, is as old as computing as itself and is severely outdated by the modern world. What Holochain does is introduces a new model for data storage and transfer that can enable any device. This allows smartphones to function individually and as part of a greater peer-to-peer -peer network without having to connect to a centralized provider. Holochain enables any device to have its own chain-based ledger system. By using a holographic model for data storage and transfer, Developers can now create decentralized applications that can scale in multiple dimensions across a network, ensuring they are truly distributed. You know, we can't ask for much more. We want a decentralized distributed network uh, that allows for you to hold your own data, allows for us to process data a lot quicker, and of course, a hell of a lot cheaper. This enables every device on a network to function independently and only requires a synchronization of the data when necessary or agreed upon by users. This means every user in, is in control of their own data and never has to risk their data being sold or exposed to third parties. He uses an example here, which I find quite funny. Um, he uses Facebook and Cambridge Analytica as examples of getting your data monopolized by a certain company. So that's all you know, fine and, and fairly understanding with, with how it's different to a typical blockchain. Keep in mind that Holochain is not a blockchain, um, but why may it be valuable? You know, what is the usefulness of the HOT token or, or Holofuel, which will be its new native token? So proof of service. Another fascinating component of Holochain is its capacity for supporting a wide variety of consensus or agreement systems between users. So it's not just uh, boxed into one certain consensus, like let's say Ethereum or Bitcoin or a lot of the others. It can run multiple consensuses on it and it's really up to the agent and how he wants to run it. For example, uh, Holochain can enable what is called proof of service consensus system where users get rewarded when a service is completed uh, for another user, then gets compensated in cryptocurrency. This is the model that Holofuel is based on, which is the cryptocurrency attached to the Holochain initial community offering, which was done in April last year, I believe. However, Holofuel is not your typical cryptocurrency. The idea behind it is the amount of fuel is attached to the volume of the community engagement. In other words, the amount of holo fuel is associated to the services, the services provided by developers, data hosters, and of course users. This isn't a coin or traditional currency. It is a system of agreement between users not associated with a monetary value, but rather a proof of service. So think of it as like bartering. You know, back in the good old days, you know, when you were cavemen, um, you would have like two goats and your other caveman mate had like um, a whole lot of a whole lot of sheep um, and you wanted to swap. You know, as long as the value was similar, you guys were happy to swap. No money was exchanged, but there was value between the two of you that you associated with the transaction. So here it says, um, uh, he, he says, I know this probably sounds complicated, but it really isn't. It is basically just digital bartering. If I do something for you, you do something for me of equal exchange or value. So a few examples. Um, it will mostly be hosting or data transfer that we will see um, Holofuel being used. 
but eventually could expand to a wide range of other use cases once more develop once developers start building more decentralized and clever and advanced applications those developers will also have the capability to develop their own unique agreement system or smart contracts based on whatever consensus model they desire as i've said earlier is that you're not um, pigeoned into one certain idea of consensus as a dap runner or um, agent you're able to build your own consensus mechanism and still be able to trade or still be able to work with a totally different consensus mechanism on the same network so i believe that is really really something special and what gives holo chain its real value okay well let's take a look at holo now holo is the actual hardware that um holo chain have built to have a distributed network um, of cloud computing um, where you can have your own data storage in your own home or you can use it to help the rest of the dApps running on the holo chain network um they they look quite you know snaz um and it allows you to earn holo fuel so much like mining if you're into mining or if you have belief in holo chain um then consider purchasing one of these or at least take a look at them and find out exactly how they work they're very easy to use i believe it says here become a host earn holo fuel Holo ports are plug and play, meaning they come with software already installed and are optimized to run Holo. Uh, just plug it in and follow the instructions. When applications need hosting, your Holo port provides storage and processing power. App creators pay you in Holo fuel, a cryptocurrency that can be sold or used to pay for your own hosting. So that's really cool. So um, this helps to host the network and, of course, to host data. So if you want to learn some more about this, I'll leave the description, uh, sorry, the link in the description below. Um, if you're someone that's into mining, this might be up your street. Quickly on to another article, um, which is going to give you an idea of where the value lies in Holo Fuel, the, nat the soon to be native token of Holo Chain. This is actually written by um, uh, Arthur Brook and Dave Atkinson, and uh, I thought it was very, very useful. Um, so this is how to understand the prices of hot and holo fuel. What is the interplay between the two? Remember the holo tokens act as a temporary transferable receipt for holo fuel when it is ready. Okay, so some of the things that uh, drive holo fuel's value. Let's start from the top. So current market for decentralized and centralized uh, hosting through Ethereum, Amazon Web Services and others. Demand for distributed computation, personal data ownership and hosting. I truly believe that this is a, a, a big one here. Personal data ownership and of course having to be able to host your data yourself or in a network that is trusted and distributed. Number of hosts and their prices based on ability to run on cheap hardware. Popularity of apps and usage levels of hosting power on the Holo network. And then the relative demand from hosts for redeeming out in each reserve currency. So just uh, briefly, he says, you will notice that neither demand or supply of a currency was on the list of key price dynamics. Patterns of thinking about currency value based on the token supply do not apply in Holo Fuel. This is by design. So this, as a mutual credit currency, the net supply of currency is always fixed at zero. Positive balances offset negative balances. So it's literally just a, 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 much like Bitcoin in this regard, is it's just a, a an accounting measure. So I've got this amount of holo fuel. I want to send it to you for hosting or 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 to transfer something. As long as you're giving me something back that we agree is of similar value, that goes back to zero. So it's value, value, transfer, and then we're we're good. We're moving on. So um, a, a few of the things that will contribute to the value as well is the hosting market, which um, you will see here uh, is uh, Holo's um, hosting devices, uh, which allows you to host your own network in your own home and to earn Holo fuel for helping the network. But we'll jump onto that uh, just in a, in a, in a sec. Um, so Sidia, the introduction of Holo Chain is a self-scaling P2P crypto architecture paired with a commodity hardware for running Holo. 
Running Holo may bring hosting prices for decentralized apps from where it is sits today on Ethereum at 400 million times the cost of cloud hosting down to the price range of cloud services or even below that price. So that's enormous to, to host on the Ethereum blockchain. It costs 400 million times more expensive than using a uh, like a host from a cloud provider, AWS, something like that. Big news. Uh, okay, and then a Holo hosting market. Uh, if you buy Holo fuel before Holo uh, hosting prices drop, then as hosts charge less fuel for hosting, you can purchase for more hosting at the same value. As buying power of Holo fuel grows the market, what? As buying power of Holo fuel grows the market, price for Holo also grows. The value of the currency is tied to its buying power in a productive economy of hosting services. Okay, and he does go on here to, 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 to state a few short term and long term influences on price. Um, so positive influences in the short term are hosts are likely to receive massive revenues at ICO or token market rates. Initial rapid fall in hosting prices means a rapid rise in buying power, which equals currency value. And then migration of noteworthy projects from blockchain will boost Holochain's credibility which I do believe, much like how projects are jumping from Ethereum to EOS, giving EOS a lot more credibility, uh, not to bash Ethereum anyway, but you know it gives them more credibility and it shows that potentially their software is more superior. But that's open for debate. Uh, negatives, uh, news of high hosting revenues would attract many hosts causing a glut of hosting supply, non-token holo fuel not accepted by many exchanges, um, bugs in early alpha, of course, and attacks on security. Long-term influences on Holo Fuel. Uh, easy to use, uh, easy use of Holo Fuel from Holo DApps will expand applications. So, you know, the DApps that will be running on the on the pro on on their protocol, as long as they are able to use Holo Fuel within them, and the users want to use Holo Fuel within those DApps then yeah, there's a really great long-term usability there and network effects. Once supply and price algorithms have reached reasonable equilibrium, prices should stabilize, making more users feel safe to try cryptocurrency. Uh, if regulators shut down crypto coins, Holofuel may continue to operate because it's uh, crypto accounting. It's not necessarily like a, a, a crypto coin. Uh, some negatives, uh, many competitors may enter the market, of course, attacks on value stability and pricing algorithms, and of course, governments that restrict use of cryptocurrency. Great, so let's end with uh, Holo and some of its price metrics and how it's performed recently. Um, Holo, otherwise known as HOT, uh, is at 53. So, you know, well established in the top 100. Market cap was 78 million US dollars. So yeah, well established, but nothing, not enormous yet. There's still lots of value there to be made. Um, volume of roughly around 3 million US dollars, which is on the lower side, to be fair. We did see a week ago, um, volumes go as high as 15 million US dollars with recent announcements on Holo Fuel being released in the near future. Um, the total supply is, is Circulating supply is pretty darn close to the total supply. So you can rest assured there's not going to be any more or too much more dilution um, when the rest of the supply is to come onto the market. Currently today, just roughly down under a percent. So nothing to really write home about. If we zoom into the recent price action, it's looked very, very healthy. Um, we saw, you know, as the rest of the market, a lot of sideways movement, which is a lot better than downward, obviously. And then a few days ago, as I've just recently said, we saw a big spike up to a market cap of about 102 billion. Um, so quite a significant jump. Um, and then we also saw the 24 hour volume jump up to about 15.2 million. Um, so that, that's really very positive. And it's kind of stuck up there since. It's found a new level um, with a market cap of roughly, you know, between 80 and 75 million. So if we just take a look at it, the market's predominantly being traded on Binance. Uh, so if you're looking for the best price to pick up Holo, then go check out Binance. 
So yeah, that's the second review of 2019. Still a little bit rusty, guys. You know, I'm going to try edit this and, and get it down to as short and sweet as possible. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe if you're looking for in-depth cryptocurrency reviews. And of course, if you enjoyed this content, help us out today with a good like and uh, we would really appreciate that. Have a good weekend, everybody, and uh, see you next week, Thursday.